In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to connect to and use Caterpillar Electronic Technician for your engine or equipment. So before I start showing you how to actually use ET, I want to discuss a little bit about ET itself. And if you want to skip ahead a minute, you can skip that portion, but I think the information is important. So CAT ET is CAT Electronic Technician, and this is the software that Caterpillar produces for basically any other technicians or a customer to be able to communicate with their engine, their machine, and see what the codes are, see what the sensors are reading, do certain diagnostic tests on it. This is the software you have to use. There's pretty much no other CAT software out there for this type of thing. Now, there are aftermarket scanners and stuff, but ET works the best for your cat equipment anyone can download et it's about a 500 megabyte file to their computer however it doesn't work unless it is licensed the license determines what version of et basically you have so i'm going to be showing you the dealer version i work for a dealer so i have the dealer version if you're a customer you're not going to have access to the dealer version you're going to have basically a customer version there's about 20 different licenses out there there's truck only there's TAPS, there's military, there's all different types of versions, but the most common are dealer and customer version. Now, the point of this video is to show you the basic layout of ET. So ET does not work by itself. You're gonna need some sort of COM adapter. I recommend the COM adapter three, which is CAT's actual COM adapter. You can always use Nexic products. There's a variety of COM adapters. And if you're gonna be plugging into a truck, you're gonna need a different adapter to go from the COM adapter to the truck. There's an OBD2 style, there's a nine pin, there's a nine pin green, and there's a six pin. So this takes the nine pin black, although the green will work in the black or the green. And you should get a power light on even with the key off when you first plug in. If you don't, you probably have a problem with the, the vehicle itself or the battery to the COM adapter. When you turn ET on and it's trying to communicate, you should be getting at least one blinking light. This is an older truck, so it's communicating on the J1708, also called the 1587. Newer vehicles, typically they're going to have J1939 and the 1708. So this is ET itself. When you first connect, or at least boot up the program, this is what you're going to see. Now, mine is set to not automatically connect. I have to click connect and then it will try to look for an ECM and if it finds one it's going to connect to it. Now unfortunately the screen record software that I'm using doesn't show the pop-up so some of the information on here is going to be lost but I've pretty much got it memorized so when you first connect this is the screen you're going to get. This is basically a, a quick snapshot of information about your machine or engine. Now, if it's a piece of machinery that has multiple control modules, they're going to be displayed on the left. This is a truck engine, so it only has one ECM, and that's displayed on the left. It's also going to show the serial number. Now, it's going to give you some basic information like the, the serial number. It's going to tell you the date and the time of the ECM, personality module code, vehicle ID, stuff like that. Bottom left, we have active codes and status flags. You can click on those, and we're going to now go to the status screen. So the status screen will tell you what sensors are reading. Also, it will tell you inputs and outputs. So if your exhaust brake or your Jacobs brake was set on, it would show you what it's set to if it's reading properly. Now, look at our accelerator pedal position. I just pushed it. It went from 3 to 68. Notice the min-max. As long as you're on the screen, it will keep the minimum and maximum. Once you change screens, though, in the status screen to a different status group, it's going to reset the minimum and maximum from that previous screen and it'll erase them forever. But it'll now start recording minimum and maximum for the current screen. Now the status groups are preset, but you can, if you want to, under groups there on the bottom left, preset certain parameters. Notice I have EUI engine, regen, and Huey engine under custom status groups. The full screen button will display one through, I believe, eight sensor readings as a full screen instead of these little lines. It's really helpful if you're trying to watch one or two. Now notice the region one didn't have many. That's because this is a non-region engine, so it's only gonna show sensors that this engine has. It's not gonna show sensors that the engine doesn't have. Makes sense? 
Now let's go to active diagnostic codes. This has no active diagnostic codes, but if it did, it would be displayed there. If it had any log diagnostic codes, this would be displayed there. There are no active events. If there were, I'd be able to click on it. Logged events is going to be displayed here. Now notice this has logged events, J1939 device not responding. That's a data link code. There's probably something wrong with dash control module or ABS module, something like that. Now notice in the bottom there, it says troubleshoot code. If you click on that, either in the logged or active events or diagnostic codes, it's gonna take you to either something called component-based troubleshooting, or it's gonna to try to log you into SIS, which is CAT's service information system. Getting ET does not give you access to those. Notice you can see the current diagnostic clock and then the amount of occurrences and the first and last time that occurred. Now we'll get back to our little information center here. It, like I said before, there's going to be more information on the left if it has multiple ECMs, which this does not. Let's go to our configuration. So we're in configuration now. Now configuration is where you can start messing stuff up if you don't know what you're doing. Notice all the configurations are collapse you can expand them and it view what information you want the first one's going to have like your engine rating and stuff so if you expand all it's going to be all the programmable features let's try to find the vehicle speed limit that is under vehicle speed parameters and it's on the very top line there vehicle speed limit go up to 127 miles an hour however if you try to change it you may require factory password or a customer password now if you get to the bottom these are very important Hey, what should I set my FLS and FTS to, bro, for, uh, for like the most horsepower? So the FLS and FTS and your personality module code should not be changed unless you're a dealer and doing a par dyno. They are set at the factory on the dyno. Please don't mess with them just because you think you're going to get a bunch more horsepower, better fuel economy. More doesn't mean better. There's actually an FLS and FTS map, and I do not recommend messing with it. Now what we're scrolling over here is wind flash. Wind flash is how you program an ECM, but we're not gonna be doing that because it's a separate program file. I do have a video though on how to program an ECM. You might wanna check that out if that's what you're trying to do. Now under diagnostics, there's a lot of features and unfortunately they're not popping up, like I said, for my um, software here, but there's one called critical events. This is different than the logged events. The critical events would be like a very high overheat. Also under diagnostics, we're gonna have our diagnostic tests, which you couldn't see, but it's there. So these are the available diagnostic tests for the engine. And injector solenoid check, special test, cylinder cutout test. Let's go to cylinder cutout test. If you were trying to do a cylinder cutout test, obviously this is where you would wanna be. Now, notice the engine's not running. We have zero engine speed, but you can still mess around with it do cutout tests. You could actually do injector solenoid tests too that's also under diagnostics if you're having electrical problems. Now we're we'll be going to service and then we're gonna go to ECM date and time. It's there, trust me. So this will enable you to change the ECM date and time. A lot of the time it is not accurate. This one's actually an hour ahead. We could change that if we want to, but this vehicle is actually, it runs in a different time zone. So we're just gonna leave that alone. Next, we're going to go into service and then calibrations. That is where you do injector trim calibrations. These are your injector trim files. Now, just like the FLS and the FTS, you should not be changing your injector trim files to just an arbitrary number. They should match what is actually on the injector. Those are there from the factory for a reason. It's supposed to let the injectors in the engine run at optimal levels. Please don't mess with your injector trim files. Leave them what they're supposed to be. Now there's a feature called the trainer, which is this little guy in the blue with the line. If you don't know how to use ET and you're just watching this video because you have no idea what you're doing, you can disconnect from the ECM and then click on the trainer. Now it's not gonna bring it up here because like I said, my software's not working, but it would show you a bunch of different engines and machines you can click on in the trainer mode. And what it's gonna do is it's going to fake connect to one of these machines or engines. And then it's gonna let you do tests, like a cylinder cutout test, change parameters. And look, it's showing that it's connected to an SDP, which is a cat truck engine, but it's really not. It's also gonna show you that the engine's running. You can do different tests. See, it's 773 RPMs, but you're not actually connected to anything. So you could do any sort of injector cutout test. You could do fake timing test, change configuration. Whatever you want to do, you're not hurting anything because it's an actual feature of this software. Please use this if you're unfamiliar with how to use ET. You'll learn a lot. 
Now while it's doing this fake injector cutout test, what it's looking for in a cutout test is a lower number, meaning that the engine doesn't have to increase the fuel to make up for that cylinder not firing. Now the downside with the trainer is of course you're not actually hooked up to a new engine, so you're not going to be able to do real troubleshooting where you can actually hear the engine running, hear a tone change when a cylinder cuts out, things like that, but on the other side is you can't damage anything or break anything or try to change a parameter and not be able to change it back. And there's a lot of features to ET and I'm I would say very good on the truck engine side but on the equipment side I have very little knowledge. So there's a lot of features ET even I don't know how to use and I've been using it for 16 years just because I'm kind of a specialist when it comes to engines. Now I could spend an hour discussing ET and showing all these different features of it. But this is meant to be just a beginner basic, okay, I plugged into it, what the heck do I do, type training. A true training would be pretty much all day. You could spend an entire day easily on ET, especially if you have a machine or an engine to hook up to. Now, this cylinder cutout, this fake cylinder cutout test is uh, coming to an end here, and we're not finding any fake dead cylinders here. So I think it's time for a little... So anyone that has watched my previous video knew I was working on a C13 that had some pretty bad cavitation in the cylinder liner number 5. Now here's the number 5 liner, and you can see that, hey, yes, it is cavitated. People were surmising that perhaps it was just this one liner, it was a casting problem, but the other liners also had cavitation. What I say is bad? No, not quite as bad. But some of it had it in more places. This one had it around the top area. This one also had it in a line, you can see. It was pretty deep on this one as well. I believe that was number two. Number one also had some pretty deep holes. It's hard to see the depth here, but pretty much all the liners had pretty bad cavitation. Hey, look, a twofer. So this is a 3208. This is also a teaser to our next video. 3208, this is the most dirt and junk I've ever seen in an engine. So this is in the valley here. It looks like something like Sasquatch was shedding in here or something. But look at the amount of dirt dirt in this intake oh my gosh it's like an eighth of an inch thick with dirt i it i've never seen this much dirt in the intake something horrible maintenance wise been going on with this engine thanks for watching the videos